On June 15, Senator Bayo Oshinawa of the All Progressives Congress died of complications related to COVID-19 infection, leaving the Lagos East Senatorial District vacant. But a by-election to fill that vacancy has now been scheduled for October 31st by the Independent National Electoral Commission. Joining us now to have a discussion about that election is Tokumbo Abiru, former banking industry executive and candidate of the All Progressives Congress, on how he intends to beat a very strong field of rivals to win that election. Welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, Ruben. Good morning. Yes. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. 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 Thank you. Well, quickly, I mean, why uh, politics? I mean, you've been in banking uh, all your life, and then all of a sudden, uh, you are trying to go to the Senate from uh, Lagos uh, East. Uh, what's your agenda? Uh, what do you think you can bring to the table? And how optimistic are you about your chances? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> once again, thank you very much. <clears throat> um, my name is Tokumbo Abiru, just like I've been introduced. <clears throat> and um, I, I am the um, <clears throat> pioneer, uh, managing director of, um, of Polaris Bank. Now I'm in the immediate past I'm managing director as well. I'm presently the APC senatorial candidate for the upcoming by-elections that is coming up on the 31st of October this, this, this year. Now, <clears throat> why politics? <clears throat> now, um, I think that for me, um, I have benefited largely from public institutions, particularly in Lagos. I am a, a proper product that, I mean, that you can de describe as a, a thoroughbred Lagosian. Um, I went to public schools there. And my primary education was at um, Rico Methodist School in, um, in uh, Moloni, somewhere around Moloni, precisely 35 Berkeley Street. Um, I grew up in the Suruleri suburb of Lagos, and after my primary school, I also went another, to another public school, which is the Government College Lagos, which was a model college as at that time. I mean, when the Lagos State came up with the model co college concept, uh, for, I was there from 75 to 81, and thereafter, I went to um, Baptist Academy for my A-levels as well, between 1981 and 1983. And I also ended up doing my first degree with them um, in um, a public institution as well, which is um, Lagos State University. So you can tell I've benefited largely from Lagos. Now, um, ever since I left university, I have worked for over 32 years, and precisely in the private sector. Now, I won't reach the pinnacle of that career. I just think that it's about time that I retire from private sector and also give back to the, I mean, to, to the public that I've benefited largely from. That is essentially why I'm coming into this. And I think that I'm coming well prepared as well. Because if you look at me, given my background, I am well grounded. I have a career-wide experience, which I think, I'll, I mean, I believe strongly I'll bring to bear. I have had the privilege, um, in terms of um, um, for, um, academic qualifications, I, I parade, I mean, a degree in economics. I'm a qualified uh, chartered accountant and a fellow of the institute. And I have also, um, I'm also, um, I have had the privilege of being a commissioner for finance in Lagos. I have worked in topmost banks in Nigeria, First Bank and Guarantee Trust Bank. And I rose to the pinnacle of that, of, of that career. I was the, an executive director in First Bank. I was also uh, the, um, uh, the group managing director of um, the Funk Sky Bank. And I also led the transition into the current day transformed Polaris Bank. So I believe that this career-wide experience and the competencies that I've acquired, I will bring it to bear and it will stand me out in terms of I mean, legislation and policy form formulation for the country. So that is why I am in this race and I think that I am eminently qualified to take on this responsibility. Well, that isn't your first foray into public sector or into governance, really because you served as Commissioner for Finance at some point under then-Governor Fashola. So I'm going to add that to the other um, achievements that you've listed. Yeah. How will you bring that to bear should you end up in the Red Chamber? You've said, as one of a point on your agenda, that you'd like to have to secure a special position for Lagos as the commercial capital of Nigeria. What exactly do you envisage? Okay, let me put it this way. In terms of priorities and my agenda, let me just put it in this context. <clears throat> One, given my background, 
I think I believe strongly I will give quality representation for the for the for the reasons that I've I mean I've adduced to my pedigree. Equally, I also I mean I, I have I also bring to bear trust and character and commitment. I'm coming fresh from the salvage I mean from salvaging an institution that had, was almost collapsing. That's um, the defunct Skybank. Now, I, have been a I was able to lead that rescue mission that, transit that we transformed into Polaris Bank. Now, now, that energy and drive is part of the commitment that I'm bringing to this assignment. And more importantly, too, I will also have the welfare of my constituents. And overall, I will also be loyal to my people and the party that has pushed push me forward. Now, speaking specifically to spe special status, um, you will all agree that, I mean, for Lagos, Lagos was the, 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 the capital, the political capital of the, of the country up until 1991. And during the time while Lagos was at the capital, and the, the pres I mean, as at the time you had the presence of federal government here, a lot of infrastructure and also um, social services that were also, I mean, that invested in Lagos has also led to the influx of a lot of people in Lagos. And, you know, and given that influx of people, which of course is well welcomed, I mean, if you look at, you have attractions like the seaports, like the, um, um, the airports, and other, other, I mean, um, infrastructural assets that had been, you know, um, established in Lagos, they will continue to attract people here. Now, the, the, the challenge is that as you have that, and ever since the capital has moved to Abuja, there is need for even the federal government to continue to support Lagos in sustaining and enhancing the, the, the capacity of this infrastructure. And that is what this special status is all about. It is not anything new. It is an agitation that has always been canvassed by even, even I mean, present um, um, legislators in Lagos and even those before me as well. So what I mean by that special status is that I will continue to join hands in making sure that this is a reality. Because the loan, we cannot leave Lagos alone to continue to handle this. I mean, to, uh, they are living up to it, don't, I mean, clearly, all the leadership that we have had in Lagos. But again, we know that there is need to continue to support Lagos, from the, uh, um, especially from the point of the federal government. That is the essence of the special status. Right. Uh, you know, uh, we wish you the best as you go for your elections. but. I would like to ask, do you have any political godfather? What's your take on political godfatherism? And uh, what is the most important problem, you know, facing the people I, I, in... I didn't get you. I said, I said, do you have any political godfather? What's your take on political godfatherism? And uh, what's the greatest problem facing the people of Lagos East, and how would you solve that problem? Well, um, I don't. I, I, well, I don't know. I, I'm trying to. I don't know exactly what you mean by political godfather, but I mean if what you are trying to say is about how I emerged. I mean, let me also just put it clearly that I mean I I wasn't the only one in this race. We were about about 15 of us, and I mean all, and all the 15 other people are equally eminently qualified. Um, and there, I mean, and the 15 of us. Um, the, uh, meaning the other 14 people built a consensus around my candidature. And of course, that consensus, we have also made sure that we have also gotten it approved by all the layers of approvals that you have in the leadership of APC in Lagos, starting from the apex body of the leadership, which is referred to as the Governor's Advisory Council, to the executive leadership of the party in Lagos, and even to the grassroots to the grassroots. We took it back to the grassroots by, and that was done on the 3rd of September when we had the direct primaries, which was an affirmation of that, of the consensus that was built on my candidature. And in that, in that um, direct primaries, I had over 111,000 um, 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 members of the party that came out unanimously to support the, the candidature. So for me, is, I mean, I don't think the issue of uh, fadarism is in, I mean, is in place here. This is a, um, uh, 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 um, uh, this is a situation of, you know, an, an acceptable candidate that is eminently qualified to represent the people. Well, I'll take you up a little further on this issue of godfatherism. Yeah. Uh, yes, you are right. You were, uh, you know, uh, chosen as the candidate by affirmation. But what we hear yeah. is that you were handpicked uh, for this position uh, by Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu, yeah. and that 
those other contestants, candidates that you referred to, mm. were asked to step down for you. And the speculation is that perhaps the godfather, your godfather, <laughs> Senator uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, uh, is trying to position you uh, for uh, the governorship position in the future. That's the allegation out there. And then in specific terms, there was a second side uh, to the question that Rufai asked uh, earlier. Uh, what will you do uh, for the people of the uh, Lagos East Senatorial District? Ibejuleki, uh, Ikurudu, uh, Ekpe, I think uh, Kushofe is also uh, on that list, and also Shumulu. Okay, thank you very much, Ruben. <clears throat> now, um, again, let me take, back, take you back to the issue of our national leader. Um, um, that's Senator Bola Ahmed to the Washuaju. Um, um, Ashwaju is someone that I have tremendous respect for. Um, <clears throat> let me also make it clear here today. Um, you know, I had the privilege of serving in, um, in um, the, in between 2011 and 2013 as the Commissioner for Finance, Lagos State. Now, um, it will surprise a lot of people that up until the time I was nominated to come and serve, I never met Ashwaju. I never, I, ne I mean, I'm, and I'm saying it openly and it can be verified. I was sworn in on the, on the, on the 4th of July 2011, precisely. My first meeting with Ashwaju was on the 2nd of July 2011. And you can imagine the process that I will have gone through before imagining, I mean, before being, you know, I, I mean, um, uh, before obtaining the approval. There will have been a selection process. I will have got, gone, gone through the um, House of Assembly screening and all of that. And I'm saying this, these are facts that can't be verified. I probably didn't meet Ashwaju on the, until the 2nd of July. And even when I met him, it was, just a, it was just a casual visit, just, I mean, formal introduction and all of that. But it was later on that I found out that he's an expert in looking for talent. He's an expert in, and he told me himself that he was, I mean, um, I never met you, I never, I never met him formally. Said, I mean, somebody brought my CV to him and he reviewed it and he said, look, this is one of the materials that I think we should put in the league of those that will shape the future of Lagos. I'm not, I won't fault anybody for that. And, you know, again, you recall again, um, when I came into service in 2011, it was meant to be a four-year arrangement. I only served for two years and on my volition, I chose to go back to my my, my profession, because I wanted to get to the peak of my career before coming back to public, public space. Now, what, is, what did I gain within that period? Within that two years, I realized that, you know, it's all, there is a lot, you know, we also, we, we in the private sector can do to continue to, you know, improve and complement what the uh, public sector is doing. But one thing was also clear for, to me was that, look, you have to, you know, be accomplished in your right fully. So I, and I felt that in the, in the corporate environment, you have got to, there is an age limit that you must attain, after which you cannot come back. So I, I, I went back, I went back, I didn't serve the four year term, I only did two years. And I, I was convinced in my mind that the opportunity will always present itself in the future. I'm a qualified citizen of Lagos and I can aspire to any of the positions in Lagos. Now, that is that. And ever since that, you know, I've had very good, I mean, a cordial relationship with Ashwaju. And I continue to respect him because he also champions the cause of several people, from I mean, downtrodden to everybody. I mean, that's the that's the, the mark of Ashwaju. Now, that is speaking to Ashwaju. Now, speaking to my what do I have for my constituents? Now, I've held a lot of consultations in the last two months that I've been in this saddle, and I can also feel some of the needs of our, of my of my people. So whether it's in Ibejuleki, whether it's in Ekwe, whether it's in Ikorudu, uh, Koshofe, and Shumon local government area. And I think one thing that is very, very paramount is that we, we have got to work on the continuous need to improve the human capital index. So the, and I think that what comes to, to mind very quickly is that for me, I will support legislations that will continue to champion the sustainable development goals that will lift people within that district out of poverty, we we'll continue to create, I mean, um, 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 give them good health, good education, and also, I mean, create a, um, a good infrastructure for them. And specifically, uh, you know, I, in, in, in my moving around, I've also seen the need, particularly along the corridor between um, Ikorodu and Itoki to Epe. I mean, the road there, there is need 
for us, I mean, to, to, I mean, my role, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to be in executive capacity, but to also facilitate and also influence and those who are in the executive capacity. And thankfully, the current uh, Minister for Works is, I mean, used to be my former boss that I still have very cordial relationship with. So I'm going to use that relationship to continue to, to also let him know that that is key to the development around, along that corridor. Detour the, 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 the road from Epe to Ibejuleki. You know, interestingly too, I mean, the current Deputy Governor of Lagos State, I mean, was my colleague when I was in cabinet, he was the Commissioner for Works. So that is the responsibility of Lagos State. So I will also facilitate and also work with them to make sure that you do those roads in order to bring the support to the, to the, to the economic activities along that corridor. Now, um, now, now coming back to the issue around whether I'm being I mean, uh, positioned for governorship or whatever, no, I mean, I don't, that's not my own lifestyle. Please let me, be, let, let me make that clear. I take every step in my life very, I mean, I mean, one at a time, and I take them very carefully. I am very thankful to the people of, um, good people of Lagos, the senatorial district, who has deemed it, deemed it fit that I, I, I should represent them in this election, believing well in my competencies and capacities. But let me also let you know that I have a very good working relationship with the current governor and even the deputy governor. The current governor and I, we have been, we have been together for, since, 19, since 2000. We worked together when we didn't even think we were going to come into public space at all. We worked together in a bank called First Inland, uh, Inland Bank. We are good friends. There is no tension. People can be speculating what they wish, but I tell you what, I mean, there is no, there is no tension with us, and I, I, and I think that this is just the figment of, of the imagination of those who are kind of plowing these um, rumors. Well, that's politics for you. Thank and you. the question my two colleagues here have asked you about godfatherism, I'm sure you understand, was not plucked from the ether. There yeah. are certain factors that define every election. Yeah. And your election comes on the heels of the Edo election in which the incumbent was returned mm -hmm. and there was a rejection of this notion of godfatherism. How, will, how do you think that will affect you? Are you nervous at all about this impression of a backlash against the huge APC behemoth that has dominated Lagos politics since 1999? Are you worried at all? And what would you like to say on behalf of yourself, Tokumbo Abiru, as an individual, not just somebody running on the APC's platform? What would set you apart from other opponents that are contesting against you? <clears throat> Thank you very much. Now, for me, you know the dynamics of let me start by saying the dynamics of Edo elections, I don't want to dabble into that. I, I think, but I, to an extent, I understand that of Lagos. Lagos here too, I think the, the, the electorates, the voters, they also understand the issues around their own environment. And here is my own, my, my own position. You know, I am coming into this not just as, um, just like, um, um, just anyone, I am coming, you know, um, in, in, in a manner that, you know, that presents quality representation. I have, you know, a quality representation given my background, and I'm sure the, the, the electorates can see a difference. I am eminently qualified by, 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 by my training, by even the career-wide experience that I've had. I have functioned as an economist and a qualified accountant. I have equally functioned as a banker, a commissioner for finance in Lagos, as the top executive of a bank, the foremost bank in Nigeria, oldest bank in Nigeria for that matter, I was, I mean, I've also, I mean, I've also had the privilege of also saving a, 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 you know, a sinking bank and transforming. I mean, I have been tested and I have been entrusted with human and material resources. I have delivered on that, you know, and, and I think that these competencies will make me stand out any day with, that, with any contestant in Lagos. I believe I am eminently qualified, and I, it can stand. I mean, it can stand me out in, I, I mean, I mean, victoriously in the elections coming up in October 31st. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, a lot of people say you don't have a you don't have political experience, you know, and you are going to be up against. Let me straight off the bat tell you who you are going to be up against. Uh, uh, but I must say that I ran for governor in the last election that a lot of people said won the last gubernatorial debate in the state that has been in the scheme of politics and things for over six, seven years, that is an important member of the PDP in Lagos State. That's going to be your opponent. Do you have the political experience and the mettle to stand against Babasane Badamasi? And why should we, Lagos East Central District, you know, because I live in that Central District, pick you 
over Vatu Lake Okay, okay, thank you. Again, <clears throat> you know, when you say I don't have political experience, you know, I when, when I hear it, I just marvel. You know, for somebody that has, you know, worked for over 32 years, worked in, you know, structured environment where you have also had to deal with complexities of managing people, somebody that has managed the lives of over 8,000 staff and preserved their jobs. And for every job that you have preserved, you know you have five dependencies, almost 40,000 lives. Somebody that has managed a sinking bank, please note, that, have over, that, had, I mean, that has over 4 million customers with 1 trillion in deposit, and I have saved all of that. 4 million customers. I mean, what more experience can you bring to bear in leadership? Whether it's political, I'm not going to join issues. I mean, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, I mean uh, it's an open contest, but I think that with that experience, part of what you need in leadership is the skills and the competencies and the, the, the connections and the links that you have been, and the bonds that you have been able to build. That is what politics is also, also all about. And I think that with my experience of over 30 years, I think this will stand me out. And I'm sure Lagosians can see it, particularly the people around my corridor. Let me also say this. I have also been encouraged by a lot of my senior colleagues in banking. A lot of them have, they have experienced, I mean, they, 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 have, they, they, have, they, they, they have encouraged the discourse. A lot of political people that I've met, I'm not just coming to this and thinking it is a slam dunk, no. I have met with the political leaders in each of the local government. The political leaders, the senior leaders who are, let me also let you know, perhaps, I mean, for, for the record, you know, I also come from a family that also has also been a progressive political family. My late dad, Honorable Justice Emeo Abiru, was the senator representing Lagos, I mean, Korodu in 1979 to 1983. My, my younger brother, also up until the late last year, was the chief whip in the Lagos State House of Assembly. So, I mean, you cannot say that all this will not come into play for me. And that's why, I mean, I mean, I added with the fact that I personally, I have, you know, in terms of accomplishment, I am an accomplished professional. So what more do you need in leadership than a combination of an accomplished professional and somebody with a strong political background? I grew up, I, I grew up in Shomolu area of Lagos State. I grew up in Bagada. You know where you have um, Pedro, um, Bawala, and all the likes. There is no part of it. Even when I went, even in my, uh, in, the, in, 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 in the campaign that we, I have gone around those belts to, to, go, to go and conduct, conduct. I have seen my, my friends, people that I grew up with, coming up. I receive text messages almost every day encouraging this cause. So I, I, I don't think I have a problem, and I don't think I'm politically naive or I, I lack, I mean, I don't have the political experience. I believe that I, I possess the qualities for, for very strong leadership for Lagos, uh, Lagos East Senatorial District at this point in time. Well, Mr. Abiru, we have just about three minutes to go, and we can't let you go without you making some comments about banking. Yeah. Where do you see the future of Polaris Bank? What should the CBN uh, do with it? <laughs> and what are your thoughts on some of the monetary policies uh, that have been taken recently okay. uh, by the CBN? Thank you again. Uh, <clears throat> well, um, Polaris Bank, I think that um, for those that understand the story, you know, um, um, came into being from the defunct Sky Bank that had, you know, very strong, I mean, very, very bad and declining prudential ratios and had governance issues and also um, experienced a lot of runs, I mean, uh, during which we, my, I mean, we were calling to come and salvage. And thankfully, we have been able to stabilize the bank, bring, and we have been able to I mean, improve on all the prudential ratios they compete very favorably with all the top tier banks in the country today, particularly the efficiency ratios. The, the bank itself is on the path of profitability today, as at the last um, um, audited financial year, which was 2019, um, we closed with a profit of about 27 billion. As at the middle of this year, just shortly I mean, after, I mean, after I left, um, <clears throat> we, had, we were also trending in the region of about 18 billion by half year in terms of PBT. And this is despite the fact that, you know, you had early headwinds in the first quarter arising from moderation in charges, bank, bank charges and all of that, are coupled with the uh, pandemic, which is to say the bank is on the tra trajectory of growth. Now, having accomplished that, what do I see as the future? The future is very bright for the bank. 
It is a digitally enabled bank today. We have, I mean, we have repositioned it properly. And, um, um, <clears throat> and um, what, what I see is that, as, as we all know, the bank is 100% owned uh, by Amcon today because of the role the regulator played in the recapitalization. So if you ask me, I think what is more appropriate is that the banking landscape today in the country and in the world is changing by, is changing. The competitive landscape is changing. You have um, techno investment in technology, and you have very strong competition even locally. You have also the challenge of the telcos to also trying to I mean, make an inroad into banking. So for me, I think what the first thing that is desirable for Polaris Bank is for, 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 the, uh, for, the, for the government to first go about the divestment so that the, 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 the trajectory of performance can be further enhanced through competitiveness and innovation. So that is, that is, my, that is my take on um, the way I see the future of Polaris Bank today. Well, I wanted you to also comment uh, on monetary policy. Recently, uh, the, uh, uh, the CBN, if I may put that, the Monetary Policy Committee, yeah. decided to reduce NPR, monetary policy rate, yeah. by 100 uh, basis points, yeah. uh, from 12.5 uh, to 11.5%. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, analysts say uh, it looks like uh, you know, the CBN has given up on uh, trying to contain inflation. Yeah. Um, but the CBN is insisting that the decision it has taken would uh, expand their credit, mm. enable the banks, the deposit money banks, yeah. to deploy yeah. more credit to those that need uh, credit. Uh, do you think that this is given? Yeah, well, or yeah. the uh, CBN should have acted differently? No, well, for me, I think that um, the, 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 the CBN is moving in the right direction. We have got to continue to encourage credit creation in the system. We need it because we need to keep um, the, all the, the factors of production you know, moving. We need to encourage people to, I mean, we need, and the, one of the very strong ways of doing it is also trying to bring down the cost of borrowing which I think is the direction. Yes, there is a challenge with the, with the situation, I mean, with, the, with what the, um, the inflation rate is right now. But importantly, please don't, I mean, we shouldn't I mean, forget the fact that, you know, we are in a post-COVID era. We need to, as much as we can, keep all factors of production into work so that our people can continue to, you know, um, earn some economic um, um, sustenance and also the pro productive capacity to can also be able to do business in the manner that is expected. Right. Um, let's talk about your legislative agenda as we go back into the topic of politics. What plans do you have to contribute to the legislative framework of Nigeria? Do you have any plans with regards to bills you'd like to move, motions, for example, and also your constituency projects. What has your community outreach been like so far, and what would you like to do? What are your, the promises that you're making to the people of Lagos East okay. Senatorial District? Okay, so in the area of, um, <clears throat> in the area of um, uh, legislative agenda, let me also say that, you know, uh, <clears throat> Um, part of what I will be doing as, by the grace of God, when I'm elected a senator of the Federal Republic, is, is to ensure that I support policies and I also initiate policies that will continue to support, one, the national, I mean, the, the national econ economic performance of the country. Um, the national economic performance of the country that will continue to um, 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 support infrastructure and also making ease of business very, 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 very conducive for investors. Then equally, um, that is from the national front. Then also, I will, my agenda, my legislative agenda will also be in the area whereby I will support initiatives that will continue to champion the sustainable development goals, that will continue to improve poverty, and also, I mean, inc I mean improve health conditions of people, education, and, um, and uh, um, uh, all, all that. Now, Narrowing it to um, Lagos, I mentioned the issue of the special status, my legislative agenda. I will join forces with my other colleagues to make sure that we continue to push that. And equally, I will also be supporting initiatives that will continue to support physical federalism because we need to continue to preserve the rights and privileges of the states in, in a, and their resources in a manner that will also continue to ensure that they have the capacity to provide the needs for their immediate constituents. Now, 
equally, I will also work around the issue, areas of financial literacy, financial inclusion, financial deadly. Those are the areas where my focus will be, and I will support legislations along those areas. Now, speaking to my specific constituent too, I, I, I mentioned the key if, uh, road infrastructure that is very, very important. I've mentioned that the road around um, from Ikorudu to Itoki to Epe, uh, the one from um, Epe to, to, to Ibeduleki, even the Lagos Ibadan Express Road. I, must, I will be also supporting in, um, the acceleration of the completion of that project. So those will be my, so I'm going to be a people-focused um, legislator. So uh, legis legislations that will support and continue to improve the human uh, capital index will be my priority. Now, speaking specifically to myself, as uh, part of what I've also seen is that I am going to, I mean, I will also try, um, I, it's, it's not about trying, I'm going, I also promise to set up an endowment that will focus on poverty elevation and, and, and um, uh, 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 elevation and eradication. So I will use my, my goodwill of over 32 years in private sector to set up an endowment that will support the cause of the vulnerable members of our society, the, the aged, the women, the gender equality, and also the youth, in order to I mean, give them a sustainable I mean, I mean, a sort of platform that will support their energy. That, personally, I will set up on my own. OK. Uh, so th there's a big contestation as regards this. A lot of people feel that senators especially just go there to make a lot of money. <laughs> I think uh, the, the, the price tag is about $13 million for every month as you're a senator in this country. Two things I want to ask you. Uh, at first, would you take, take a pay cut? And do you feel that lawmakers should be part-time? Because I think we're having a conversation here and uh, we're throwing around a couple of ideas about lawmakers being part-time, really. Do you feel lawmakers should be part-time? And three, I just want you to narrow down what you said about, you know, capital inclusion was music to my ears. Because I wanted to ask, how would you help small business owners along your senatorial constituency? Because if you look at that stretch, you've got a lot of small business right, owners right. So, around so, that area. You know, you know, um, given my experience, you know, um, my, my background too, right? Um, you know, when you are when you are, I mean, when you are taking on a challenge like this, you have to also think deeply about your approach. Now, um, what I mean by, I mean, and I've seen whether you go to Shumulu Bariga, where you see all those all those small businesses, printers, and all of that, or you go to where you where you have the market women and all of that. I think. Part of what I have in mind in terms of my, end, I mean, the kind of uh, um, endowment and uh, poverty elevation program that I'm going to do, and which, as we speak today, is being modeled. I mean, I have got people working on it for me. Is that, and, and in the very, in the, in, the, in the shortest possible time, hopefully, I, either immediately after the election or before the election, I will unveil it. Is to look for how you can first help a lot of small businesses, even beyond. Um, um, public funds and all of that, use my own goodwill and my personal resources to set up a foundation that can meet the needs of people. That I promise. And I, can, I, can, I would like anybody to take me on of that within the, I mean, my first 90 days in office. That I will, I will, I will certainly will make sure that I put in place. That, that is one. Then the other question is, I mentioned something about, I said financial inclusion, inclusion. That is maybe bills that will support financial inclusion, which is to get a lot of the unbanked people, underbanked people, to get into the banking, banking, banking uh, space. Um, a lot of people are still yearning for basic account. Um, a lot of people want access to credit. Now, policies that will support that. The CBN and the Bankers Committee, I must confess, they've come a long way and are doing a great job. But of course, you will continue to look for avenues to make sure that that is improved upon. Well, sure. Mr. Biru, thank you very much uh, for joining us on the morning show. Thank you very much. Uh, we've very enjoyed our conversation very much with you. Thank you. We much. wish you all the best. Thank you very much. And I hope you vote for me if you, if you happen to live within <laughs> that, that, that belt. Because I, I, I <laughs> thank you so much, Ruben. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you.